Welcome back to Hopper's Hot Rods. Today we're gonna concern ourselves with wiring the LS engine in the A-Team van here. Terminator X Max crank, it's called a 24X crank, which has a 4X cam sensor. The old style crank sensor and the more modern style crank sensor use different voltages. A five volt square wave reference signal, they'll work for a vehicle with a 58X crank and you don't even have to remove the uh, TPA, and the TPA stands for uh, Terminal Position Assurance. It's the little clip that holds the thing into the modular plug. Because the internal switching threshold on the computer is only three and a half volts. It's boring. So, it's boring. Well, it is people boring. People like knowing this. This is important stuff. So no, no, they the don't. harness is part no, number. Not. 867-530-99. Oh, we're not what? doing part numbers. Please stop it. Just stop do, do it. you want to do Can this? Can you stop it? I mean, if you want to do this. Yes. Fine, you can do it. I don't care. See, I care. Yes, please. Move me. along, move along, move along. I apologize about him. Let me uh, tell you real quick that Hopper's Hot Rods is a largely a volunteer organization. So the people that get hired for different positions are absolutely not qualified for doing that work. In order to make this work, use the 58X harness and a 24X crank sensor and you just chisel out a little piece of plastic so it'll plug into the more modern harness and that's it. Done. See, told you it was easy. I told you. Let's get this thing running. Take 22. The first thing after the parts description and the instructions is fuel system. A fuel gauge or pressure transducer is recommended. It doesn't come with it. Um, part number blah, 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 blah. And you have to have a 1 8 inch NPT port. That's national pipe thread, I think. So before I even do the wiring, I'm not even completely finished with the fuel system. I'm going to install this little adapter without the gauge to get my 1 8 inch NPT port. So let's get this going off here. This gauge is not likely to continue to work long anyway because all the glycerin drained out of it. It's got a little plug that came out of the bottom. So hopefully we can just use this adapter. NPT, that national pipe thread, um, slight taper. That's the international symbol for taper. So pipe threads have a little bit of a taper to them. And uh, so the tighter you get it, the tighter it becomes in the, in the threads. So that's what you clicked on the video. So you get to see all the boring crap. This uh, thread sealant is rated for high temperature. That's completely not necessary. Regular thread sealant would work. Even some uh, uh, Teflon tape that would, you would use for regular plumbing would work just fine. Well, Jesus, I put six bucks for this stuff and nothing's coming out. There we are. But a little bit of sealant helps things. You also don't have to go crazy tightening these things down. I always probably over tighten them a little bit because I'm paranoid about leaks, but. All right. I think this is going to be a good location for our fuel pressure sensor. I looked at the wiring and it can kind of tuck in and come right between the fuel rail and the intake manifold and plug in right here. I think it's gonna be the best spot. So, let's just get this broken loose. I already checked to make sure there's no pressure in the fuel system because it will just squirt everywhere. Um, and that is the voice of experience talking. I managed to do that earlier. Oh, that should be just enough fuel to make the whole place smell. Let me
At least we know we had some fuel flowing. I don't know if it was the correct amount, but we did have fuel. All right, like that. This is something that you may encounter um, if you're putting an LS in an older vehicle. Um, a lot of people like to run regular hot rod type gauges, which is what this sending unit is for. But the uh, ports on, a, uh, on an LS are metric, so you need to get an adapter to use the old hot rod type temperature sensor or oil sensor with an LS. Take 23. Huh. Step one took about two hours. Whatever. Um, step two, oxygen sensor installation. That looks like this. I guess kind of an exciting part here. And it comes pre-treated with anti-seize. Which is also nice. So I can seal that thing up. Okay. No, oh, you're back. That's what that was. Oh, that's the oxygen sensor. Um, let's see here. ECU mounting. This is the ECU. It's got four convenient holes for mounting it someplace. I don't know where I'm going to put it yet. I'm going to plug in most of the harness and then see where all those ends come to and figure out my potential mounting locations before I make that decision. So as much as I do follow directions, I, sometimes you have to skip around because it's a bit of a chess game. I have to think a couple of moves ahead sometimes. So I'll see what's after that. Wiring. Important do's and don'ts. I'm going to read this. I'll be right with you. Take a short break. Yeah. I read the do's and don'ts and the very next thing on the instructions and I'm not kidding here either is the main power slash battery connection that's this harness here it looks very long looks like we've got plenty of room to run the power anywhere we need to but at the end of the uh, paragraph about how to install this it says don't connect to this until after all the wiring and installation is performed and why are you putting it at the beginning? Why wouldn't you put it after all the wiring and installation? Then the last thing would be to do the thing that you just said to do last. Yeah, yeah. Okay, we're moving on to primary harness installation and sensor connectors. That we can do. All we gotta do is plug in everything that we can identify, and if we don't know what it is, we'll Google it. Let's go. First connection is going to be the coolant temperature sensor and it lives right here behind the alternator on the driver's side. So let's get that uh, plugged in. And we're back from the coolant temperature sensor. All right. Uh, next thing is wideband oxygen sensor. Well, we did the installation and now we'll do the connection. Let's go that way. The harness that Holly supplies does not plug directly into the O2 sensor, even though it's marked WBO2 and it comes with a Bosch wideband O2 sensor, but they do provide an adapter. Why they don't just put the plug on the harness for the one they sell with the kit I do not know but they don't so we're plugging it together we may have to unplug it when we route everything but it is now connected and we can move on and that's what that looks like all right fuel pressure <laughs> that we can plug in we know where that is fuel pressure sensor Done. Finally. Now, manifold air temperature. 
Should be easy enough. Let's go find that. Well, I found it. It's at the store. I mean, it's a, a piece I'm gonna have to go buy. This uh, Trailblazer SS type intake doesn't have a manifold air temperature sensor. And according to these here instructions, it is required. So, after doing a little checking, not only do I have to try to find one, I have to drill a hole in the manifold someplace to make a provision to mount it because I don't know what they used. Maybe it went in the air intake system or something, but it's another delay. No big deal. It's just not, uh, you know, this stuff comes up when you're, when you're building custom, but you know what? When you, when you craft something yourself, your will and your striving is what builds it. And anybody can just go buy something new to come across an obstacle and figure out the puzzle it is part of the fun it's part of the aggravation but it's also part of the fun okay we now have a manifold air temperature sensor I got the Delphi TS 10077 it's a GM air temperature sensor, but it's got uh, threads on it instead of being a push and a grommet thing, and that is because this intake has no provision for an air temperature sensor. So I can either cut off this vacuum port and tap this, which I may. That would be pretty much perfect. You can get the ones that are smooth and just glue them in, but then if you ever want to change them, you have to break all that glue out and redrill it and glue it some more, but this will be interchangeable. So let's see if we can figure that out. All right, here's our manifold air temperature sensor threaded into this little area here we can now put the intake back in the van okay where were we oh yes the mat the manifold air temperature happen to have one handy right here let's just see there's the tab and that is on nice okay great Okay, crank sensor, knock sensors, those are connected, they are under the vehicle, and uh, they look like this. All right, we're under the van, so you can see where the cam sensor goes, and it goes right there. And here's where the knock sensor gets plugged in, hopefully. This is the TPS, also known as the Throttle Positioning Sensor, and all it does is sense where the throttle is. It's not uh, that big a thing there. Let's go to the next one. Okay, this is the IAC. I've even heard it called an IAC. Um, that just means idle air control, and inside this little housing here, there's a, an electric servo that lets air past the throttle blade to make the engine idle up or down. It's basically a controlled vacuum leak and uh, the computer determines what idle it needs to be and um, tries to make sure it achieves that idle and keeps that idle. All right, we're back inside the van. Uh, here's the harness that says injectors and uh, there's one big plug that goes to eight individual plugs for these injectors so I'm going to set that up now got 
our fuel injectors in there. Now we can. Uh, I was going to mention we just put in the fuel injector harness, and each of the injector plugs was labeled one through eight. One, three, five, seven. The odd cylinders are on the driver's side. Two, four, six, eight are on the passenger side. They're labeled that way and laid out that way. But uh, just in case you didn't know, now you know that. Because also, the next thing are the ignition coils, and they are labeled even and odd. So the two, four, six, eight, those can be your even plug and the odd plug. So everything will fire at the correct time. So let's go and plug those in. Here we are. Here's our ignition coils. And here's our ignition even plug. So we plug this in on this side of the engine because these are cylinders 2468. There are two ground wires in the harness. We're going to go bolt them to the back of the engine heads to clean tight connections. Those, those are a biggie. Can't mess around with them. Good to keep it grounded, gotta keep it grounded. Next is handheld connections. Um, that's the little uh, touch screen where you can get in and play with the settings while you're driving, which is kind of cool. So uh, we'll figure out where that connection is and plug that in. Okay. It's two o'clock in the morning and the words are starting to blur together. I think we'll uh, attack this thing in the morning. And we'll see you bright and early, like around noon. Well, it's morning, and as you can tell, I'm extraordinarily excited about getting started on the van again. I'm just kidding. I really am kind of excited because. Um, I thought about where to mount the computer because under the hood of the van is all kind of crowded and they recommend that you mount it in the vehicle anyway but behind the dash of the van is also kind of crowded so I'm thinking under the seat that's where it was in the 80s when they had a computer controlled vehicle so that's where we're gonna put ours Okay, we got the seat in place. I have an area marked out for the computer over here. Far enough forward to where it's as easy as it's going to be to plug in things. And the hole needs to be back here. There's a reinforcement rib that runs along here. So right back here, we're going to make a nice hole for the wires to pass. Placement of the hole is critical. And the instructions uh, very clearly said to drill a two inch hole for all the wires to pass through. So we're going with three inches. One of the uh, important connections for the harness under the hood is the ground. And it's also an important connection near the computer to have a good chassis ground. So I took my little wire brush and I cleaned up this little area. Got a hole here that goes to under the car. I've cleaned that area. I'm even buffing the washers with a wire brush because they are anodized grade eight washers. And uh, that'll make them nice and shiny. So when we put the bolt through, I'm gonna weld it on the bottom. So I've just got this nice stud sticking up. I can ground anything I want. Okay, so we have our hole cut, we have our 
main power coming through, we have the transmission harness coming through, and we have the main computer harness coming through with the relays and such, and these are the plugs that will go to the computer. It's not a crazy amount of slack either, so it, you know even if it's coiled up, it won't be. It'll be a bundle of wires under here, but it'll be manageable. And I put a little reference post right here from underneath, so I can set the computer where it's going to go before I tack weld in some bolts and tighten it down permanently or as a fixture. Okay, take 22. The next thing on the list after the coil ground wires, which we have installed, they are on the engine right there is the handheld connector and that connects to the CAN which I'm not sure what that stands for but that is the connector for the CAN sticking right out there so it'll plug in under the seat but there's no point plugging it in yet because we're not ready to do the thing we'll plug that in set everything up and then tuck it under the seat also or unplug it and stick it somewhere else so let's go on to the next one and that's going to be Loose wires required 12 volt switched, 12 volt battery, and 12 volt fuel pump. There's fuel pump, there's switched, there's ground, there's tachometer, and 12 volt battery is over here. Alright, here we are. It looks like a big pile of mess, but it's actually quite organized. Um, the transmission harness, the main power harness, and the engine harness all come through. They all are plugged into the computer, which is uh, secured to the floor. It's all within the underside of the chair. This is the handheld programmer that we'll do our initial setup with. And uh, so we can, and this is the ground lug, which is nice and clean it's already grounded so is the transmission harness the uh, wires that turn everything on are run under the carpet up to the fuse panel so I can throw the uh, chair back in and then we make our connections and we head down the highway I use this Optima yellow top battery it's got side and top posts and I put the marine posts on there because it's easier to connect things all right <clears throat> Here's the thing, everything's wired up. But the list of things left to do before I can start the engine is <laughs> sizable. So I'm going to conclude the wiring video. But I will say this when you program the Holly Terminator X Max X Factor Super Duper software, you kind of need to know a bunch of stuff <clears throat> more than I thought sure you have to know your number of cylinders and your engine displacement which is pretty easy but then they want um, injector part number so you have to crawl in there and find that the cam specifications if it's not a stock cam which if you put the new cam in usually you have that information but you still need to have it handy the tire diameter if you're doing the transmission which we're also doing the rear end gear a lot of people don't know what their rear end gear is but also and this one got me pre 2009 4L60 second gear ratio apparently there were two different ones and the computer wants to know which one it's talking to I have no idea how to even find that so I'm gonna have to look that up and uh, I'm going to get on the phone with Holly, ask them a couple other questions to help me through the uh, software configuration. In the next video, we'll run down our list, test fire this thing, and test drive this thing. It's ready. It's so close. Thank you for watching. See you soon.